Hello everyone and welcome back to our series on energy modeling fundamentals with Honeybee. And in the previous video we calculated the energy savings that we'd received from a retrofit strategy on a single family home. And we evaluated the impact on the energy use intensity that this retrofit would have. And we came to the conclusion that while a retrofit like this is significant and could pay for itself possibly over a few years, it may not be enough to really make a retrofit like this worthwhile. So in this video, we're going to be evaluating the impact that an energy conservation strategy like this can have on the size and the corresponding cost of the heating and cooling system that is needed for a building. And little did you know that whenever you've been running a simulation so far with this model to OSM component, Energy Plus runs a very, very tiny calculation before it does a whole annual energy use calculation. And that small calculation is to determine the size of the heating and cooling systems in preparation for the upcoming annual simulation. And this is done for a number of reasons, notably because the size of heating and cooling systems can affect their efficiency and corresponding energy use, but just the size of those systems themselves has a lot of value, and that's what we're going to be looking at in this video here. So let's dive into it. So first off, if we look under the result tab here, you guys will notice there's a component called HB read HVAC sizing. And this is what we're going to be using to read in some of the data from that initial sizing calculation that Energy Plus runs before it does the annual energy calculation. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of room here. Maybe we'll move this, these EUI values next to our comparison here. And you'll see that this read HVAC sizing component just needs a SQL file as input. So we can take this SQL file from our simulation here. And as soon as we plug it into this component, it will run. And if I pull up a panel here, you'll see that we get a few outputs from this component. So the first is that we get the names of the zones or, or rooms in our model. And we only have one room because we've just been modeling the whole building as a single room for this case. But if you were to model a larger building with multiple rooms, you can get several room names out here. And this is meant to align with the peak cooling and the peak heating outputs that follow it. So we can see if we hover over the zone peak cool output here, it tells us that the peak cooling of the zone on the summer design day, and this value is in watts. So essentially this is the amount of watts that need to be removed from the space in the hottest, sunniest day of the summer in order to ensure that the thermostat can still reach the set point to make people comfortable. And this is right around 3000 watts, which is a few window air conditioning units large. If we go and take a look at the peak heating, we have about uh, close to 4,000 watts or so. And usually to get an intuitive sense of this, a standard hair dryer is about 1,000 watts. And so you could imagine that you'd be able to heat this building by running the four hair dryers at once. Although that wouldn't really be the most efficient or safest way to heat it. That's about the size of a heating system that we need for a single family home. And bear in mind, this is with the retrofit that we did to reduce the infiltration and to improve the insulation of the roof. So now that we have these numbers, I'm going to copy and paste them into their own panels so that we can do a comparison without the energy retrofit. So I just, right clicked on the panel here and selected copy data only. And then I'm going to paste this into a panel by double clicking on the canvas, typing quotations, and then control V to paste. So I'm gonna label these so I don't forget what they are. This is peak heating. And that is in Watts, as I mentioned. And we also have the peak cooling, which I'm going to also copy paste from this panel. We'll say copy data only. I'm going to double click and control V to paste that peak cooling into there. And let's make sure we change our label. And maybe just to get ourselves all prepped here, I'll just hold down shift and we'll have both these values essentially ready to come out once we change our model back to the older pre retrofit scenario. So let's go and do that right now. I'm going to go and set this toggle to false so that we don't run the simulation for each edit that we make to our model. And I'm going to put back our old model parameters. I guess we can easily do that with the mid-rise apartment by plugging in just this default 2019 mid-rise apartment straight into the program of the HB room from solid. And to change our construction set, I'm going to just copy paste this panel in case we have to come back to the old scenario. 
And I'm going to just change the 2019 in this panel to 2004 for the 2004 building code that we think is roughly representative of the building as it is now. And we'll plug that in for our construction set. And now let's go and head over back to our simulation. And we'll see, we'll run it again, but this time we'll make sure to compare our peak cooling and peak heating. So we'll just set this toggle to true. And you guys will actually notice the very first few lines of, of progress that, that happen here. These are actually this, this warming up. Those are that, that sizing calculation that's running before it goes and loops through the months that you see there. And lo and behold, wow, it looks like our retrofit does have a pretty significant impact on the size of the cooling and heating system. In fact, wow, in terms of the cooling system, it looks like we could actually reduce the size of the air conditioner that we need for a building like this by almost half, thanks to sealing the building up and reducing that infiltration and improving that insulation. So this could be pretty significant. It may not be like a direct one-to-one -one savings in terms of the percentage reduction in the cost of the system, but I'm pretty sure we can step down at least one size of a cooling system if we were to implement an energy retrofit like this. And similarly, the heating, it's not quite halved in this case, but it's significantly, it's at least two thirds of what it would have been otherwise had we not done the energy retrofit. So we could look into the actual costs of different sizes of systems to really evaluate this, but this at least gives us a rough idea of how much we could save using a strategy like this. But just like the energy use intensity, simply having these numbers doesn't necessarily give us confirmation that it really was our retrofit that caused us to have such a smaller heating and cooling system. And just like with these other analyses that we ran after we determined the energy use intensity, it would be really nice if we could get some sort of deeper understanding of where these numbers came from. Where do we get this peak cooling and this peak heating? And you can see there are other outputs of this component that will give you sizes for different components of the HVAC system. But the key thing that I want to understand right now is actually not in the SQL result file at all, but in this other CSV file, this ZSC CSV file that Energy Plus outputs. And this actually keeps a record of that sizing calculation that runs at the very start of the simulation. And we have a component that's made to parse the data within this CSV file. If we go under the result tab here and find this HB read zone sizing component that's all the way at the bottom, I can drag and drop this onto the canvas. And you'll see that this takes a, the ZSC file as input and I can simply connect that up to here. And then if I bring this down here, we can see what exactly we're getting out of here. And you see that it's a data collection not all that dissimilar from the data collections that we had been working with to evaluate the hourly cooling and hourly heating, but this is a little bit different. It's, it's not hourly in this case, it's every 10 minutes we have a data point, and in total we have 144 values. And if you were to do the math of the number of minutes times 144, that actually comes out perfectly to 24 hours. So what this is is a record of the amount of cooling that this single family home needed over the course of that worst case sunny summer day. So it's ultimately from this that we are pulling these specific numbers. And we can visualize this data on a monthly chart, just like what we did with the energy balance. So if I drag and drop this LB monthly chart component on the canvas here, and we may need to turn the preview off because we have already this energy balance monthly chart previewing in the scene here. So I'm going to just go and temporarily turn the preview off on this monthly chart that has the energy balance. So I'm going to right click in the center and hit preview. And now that we have the read zone sizing component that's reading in the ZSC file from our Open Studio component, and we have this data coming in here, I'm going to plug this cooling load data into the LB monthly chart. And it's going to give us a little bit of a kind of fuzzy line at first, but we can see the y-axis is telling us that it's plotting power. And we can see that this is specifically the design day sensible cooling load. So this number you'll notice at the top is actually the same, practically the same as the one that we see here coming through the read HVAC sizing component. So maybe we can make this chart a little more readable. I'm going to set the stack to true, just like what I did with the monthly chart. And you'll see all that's going to change in this case is that we'll get it in a filled polygon so we can more easily see this as a profile over the course of the day. 
The other thing is we see that the X dimension is a little narrow in this case. So I'm going to boost that up from the default 10 meters to something like 40. Let's say we'll connect 40 there. Okay, so this is looking a little clearer, and we can actually start to understand what is going on here. So this is meant to be over the course of this day. At nighttime, we barely have any cooling load. That starts to pick up in the morning, and we hit a peak sometime later in the day. An easy way that we can get a sense of the day, rather than seeing this January here, which isn't particularly helpful, we can connect the Boolean toggle to time marks here, which you'll see if we hover over the description says that it can change the month labels to simply plot the hours over the course of the day. So this is going to be much more useful for a data collection like this. If I connect this toggle, the same toggle we have to stack, I'm going to connect it to time marks. And this is already looking a lot clearer, right? We can see at midnight, we, have, we still have a little cooling that drops to practically zero in the nighttime in this, in this LA climate. And, Probably that's a big result of the diurnal swings that we have in, in the hot and dry climate, like in Los Angeles here. And understandably, we have the largest peak. It looks sometime around 4 or 5 p.m. in the afternoon is when the biggest amount of peak cooling is needed over the course of this design day. And we have a similar data collection. Just like for cooling, we have a data collection for heating. And this is going to be on the darkest, coldest winter day. And that's ultimately what's determining our peak heating here. So if I were to go and connect the peak heating to this LB monthly chart, we'll see that it's not, not quite as exciting. There's no big peak in the afternoon as there was for cooling. And it's generally like a very mellow, flat type of curve that we have here that essentially almost over the whole course of that dark winter day, we have a pretty constant need for roughly 6,000 or so watts of heating or six hair dryers worth of heating. So all right, we can start to get a sense of where these peak cooling and peak heating values come from, how they were determined from the simulation. And I'd encourage you guys, if you wanted to compare the peak cooling profile that you get for this baseline scenario versus the retrofit scenario we had just run, I would really encourage you to do so. But if you can imagine, there's one level deeper we can go in our questions here. Rather than just knowing where these peak cooling and peak heating values came from, we can ask the question of, why is it really the way that it is? And much like in the same way that we use the monthly energy balance to help us understand why the annual energy use is the way it is, there is a similar graphic that we can use to understand this peak cooling and peak heating values. And that is specifically a chart that I would call the peak load plot that you see here. So we've been looking at something like this peak cooling load profile over the course of the design day. But there is a type of visualization where we can actually see the individual types of contributions to that peak cooling or to that peak heating. And in fact, we can even see as we were to change scenarios, let's say decreasing the amount of glass on a certain area, we could actually see a reduction happening in these factors and correspondingly in that profile of cooling demand that is ultimately determining how large and how expensive our cooling system is. So in the next video, we're actually going to construct a visualization like this, and we're going to do an exercise that gives you a more intuitive sense of what drives the peak cooling and peak heating of various different designs. So thank you guys for sticking it out through this video, and I look forward to seeing you in our final installment of our Energy Modeling Fundamental Series in our last video coming up next.